the notion of things getting better with age is a lovely one if you are a bottle of wine or a whiskey. Not so great for us as humans, and actually come to think of it, neither for cars. The general rule of thumb is that neither of us are going to get better looking with age. One proof? Have a look at me 20 years ago. Or for an equally sad motoring analogy, just have a look at the first generation big German SUVs. Luckily, cars can be reborn. Their creators improving them with each generation. Case in point. The Cayenne isn't a classic beauty, but it certainly gets your attention in Porsche's typical understated fashion. Being a performance lover, the larger air intakes immediately grab my attention, visually confirming what you are about to experience when you get behind the wheel, improved performance and efficiency. But in a market where massive bling grills dominate, this blacked out front end is refreshing, iPhone X notch and all. All Cayennes are fitted as standard with LED headlights, but now there's an option of fitting Porsche's dynamic light system, which adds cornering and highway lighting features. The third generation Cayenne is 63 millimeters longer, coming in at just under five meters. So it's a big car, but it hides its proportions well. The wheelbase remains the same, so the increased length means better interior space and a 100 liter jump up in the boot to 770 liters. That's impressive. Now what the Porsche purists will notice is that the Cayenne is upsized in the wheel department. 19s are now standard, but the turbo that we're in has 21s to keep us glued to the road. But you know, even more significant for the first time on the Cayenne, it's something they did on the Macan, is they've actually gone with a split tire combo. It's wider in the rear. So it does seem like the sports car characteristics of the Porsche brand is really coming to play in the new Cayenne but it is incredible how LED technology has given designers freedom to explore, creating defining light signatures and bold new curves. The rear lights have been redesigned, and in case people didn't know you are in a Porsche, well, they've kindly spelt it out for you, encased in a distinctive end-to-end -end housing with an LED strip illuminating your success and your performance dominance in the day and after dark. From the rear, the turbo is easily identified by the twin tailpipes. This is the best looking Cayenne by a long shot. Porsche's dynamic design language is clearly evident. And I suppose you can also see their whole approach to evolution rather than revolution because they're no hard edges. They've just rounded and sculpted things really nicely. What it does give you is a Cayenne that is more squat and more athletic. It's an impressive looking machine, but there've also been some improvements on the inside. This interior is dominated by their advanced cockpit. Now we've seen it before on the Panamera and it really is this 12.3 inch touchscreen that is massive, but thankfully very well integrated into the dash. Advanced Cockpit has features and functionality we really can't fully explore in a short insert, but it does include navigation along with a whole host of online services. But importantly, setting your Cayenne up to tackle the curves or the cliffs is now accessed in full HD. All the control buttons are integrated to give you a smartphone feel, and that visual and tactile experience is carried down to the center console. Accessing the buttons there, though, isn't the easiest. Some old school does remain on the dash and it takes center stage, the analog rev counter, which is flanked by two seven inch full HD displays, giving you driving data and additional info that you can personalize on the main interface and access through the multifunction steering wheel. Oh, this is one thing that Porsche always nails is the driving position. It's, it's almost transformer-like. You actually feel like you are the car. It's incredible. And in the turbo, both the sports seats in front have 18-way uh, electrical adjustment. Um, it's got memory function as well, so there really is no excuse as to why you can't find your perfect driving position. But you know, something else that they've nailed is the ability to package performance and sport-like handling into a practical daily driver. It's incredible. With a center and a rear lockable diff, as well as all of those all-terrain options, 
this car is super capable. But what is interesting for me is that Porsche's narrative has been around pushing and promoting the more sports car-like characteristics of the new Cayenne. Yet a lot of this technology that I've now made available is not standard, not even on the turbo. Things like the rear axle steering, which you get on the 911 and the Panamera, an option. Their dynamic chassis control, where the anti-roll bars are disengaged to help mitigate body roll. That's also an option on the turbo. But let me tell you what is standard and it's a first in the SUV segment, is they actually have active aero, the adaptive rear spoiler. And what that does is just give you some improved downforce and under braking, some additional stability as well. But it's time to change personality. Sports plus mode, manual, so we can really appreciate the improvements in performance from the 4-litre V8 by Turbo. Oh boy, I love this engine. It just never seems to run out of push. And I guess that's also helped by the fact that their new 8-speed Tiptronic S transmission has got sportier ratios. There are quicker shifts. And uh, not that we're testing it out now, but they've also got longer ratios uh, in eighth gear for the economy run. But if you do have the Sports Chrono Pack, it's gonna smash 0 to 100 in 3.9 seconds, and eventually it's gonna run out of steam at 286 kilometers an hour. That is impressive. But can I tell you, obviously we've got everything in this car. The rear axle steering, I've got the stabilization with the dynamic chassis control. Even if I didn't have it, I would still think that this car is absolutely stonking and fantastic to drive. There is just something so inherent in a Porsche's DNA. And you're going to forget that you actually are in a big SUV at nearly five meters. It is so responsive and it handles like, yeah, it handles like a Porsche. What more can I say? The Cayenne is powered by a 3-litre turbo producing 250 kilowatts and 450 newton meters and it starts at well, just over 1.1 million rand. The Cayenne S has an all-new 2.9-litre bi-turbo engine which produces 324 kilowatts and 550 newton meters. The turbo that we've been driving starts at 2.2 million rand but simply adding the Sport Chrono package, the rear axle steering as well as the dynamic chassis which includes that air suspension has already added 120,000 Rand to the price. So it has been a really busy year for the VW Group's SUV department. They've launched the Lamborghini Urus, Audi Q8 is there. There's obviously the all new VW Touareg and the Bentley Bentayga now has a diesel engine. And now we have this, the Cayenne. All of these cars sharing the same platforms, engines and technologies. So which one do you buy? Well, I think that comes down to your brand affiliation and probably, most importantly, the size of your bank balance.